Yes. There is another one here. Allah Subhanallah. 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 Allah What's your name? Is Hani. Okay, Allah her name is Hani, and she wants to also take shahada. Inshallah. Allah Akbar. Okay. Uh, just repeat after me, sister. Okay. I swear. I swear. There's no God to worship. There is no God to worship. Except one God. Except one God. A Allah. Allah. And I swear. And I swear. Muhammad is his messenger. Muhammad is the messenger. Allahu Akbar. Okay, now the Arabic, if you say it slow after me, it'll be easy for you. Ready? Okay. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. An la. An la. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa. Wa. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Ana Muhammad. Ana Muhammad. Rasulullah. And so I went back home and then I went back to work and I felt like I didn't I didn't feel well. And then I felt like I was doing something wrong. Because I felt this I don't know. Um fear in Allah, taqwa, fear in Allah. And all I wanted to do is to please him. And I felt like what I was doing was displeasing him. And that my mother, you know, kind of woke me up. So I went up to my father and I said, Oh, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to leave everything behind. I want to bring everything for Islam because I want to be a good Muslim. And I want to obey Allah. And I want to uh, work for the hereafter. And he helped me, Alhamdulillah, I know I always made the one at night that made, may Allah make it easy for me. And, and he did. And after after that, I started um, going to Islamic gatherings and going to the masjid to attend. That always having balance, and I think that's what the Prophet, uh, the Prophet's message, peace be upon him, it was fundamentally about having balance and equilibrium in all that we do, uh, so that that was also something which was quite revealing to me uh, when I became a Muslim is that when we talk about justice uh, sometimes uh, our sense of justice can lead us to an injustice in the people who become the perpetrators who were the initial perpetrators of an injustice against us and the Prophet peace be upon him's message was always that you repel bad with good that you always respond to evil with good that you should always remember that God loves justice and never transgress the limits so that even when people are committing serious injustices against you even when the perpetrators may be responsible for heinous crimes you have a moral responsibility and a moral obligation in front of God to always uphold justice and never yourself transgress those limits. My name is Jamie and I converted to Islam a week and a half ago. Wow. Before I became a Muslim, I was not a very conservative person. I was not, I was not a very good person. Uh, I modeled for Playboy. I did that for about five years, and during that time, um, I, I did a lot of drugs. And I thought, oh, I can do meth, and I won't get addicted because I'm just using it as a as a weight loss helper, and you know, I I'll just use it every once in a while to just keep myself from eating so much. Yeah. Right. I thought I was strong enough to not get addicted to a drug that absolutely addicts basically everyone who uses it. So I started doing meth and I would probably give it a couple weeks and then I got really addicted to it and I did it all day and all night for five years. And it really brought me to a place of complete rock bottom. And my husband at that time had been doing it with me and he started getting violent with me and I was afraid for my life. So uh, I decided to quit. 
I decided that that's not what I wanted for my life. And I told him, I said, I'm going to quit. And he laughed at me and he said, yeah, right, you're not going to quit. And I said, you know what? I'm going to quit. I quit that day cold turkey. Never again looked back. I didn't have any type of rehab, no outside help, no support system. I had my husband laughing at me and trying to get me to do it again. After that, I had my little boy. My whole focus on life kind of changed. I, I had this wonderful little boy who needed a good mother, and I, I loved him so much, I wanted to change everything that I focused on for him. All right, guess what's going to happen? The train's going to take off. Look at that plane! <laughs> Back in the day, I could do anything I wanted. I, I was very involved in basically the Hollywood scene that anybody would want to be involved in. A lot of people are surprised that I gave that up in order to become a Muslim. But the funny thing is, is, is when I said my Shahada, the desire to do all those things was completely taken away from me. I used to drink, did drugs, you know, all that stuff. I don't want to do them anymore. It's amazing to me that I, I feel peaceful in my heart about being a Muslim. Well, many people turned to religion to help them cope in the days after the 9-11 attacks, and some even chose new faiths, including Islam. That may be no surprise, since a quarter of the estimated 6 million Muslims in the United States are converts. Delia Gallagher looks at two people who chose that path. Alison Poole says this phrase three times in Arabic, and then in English. There is no God. But God. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That Muhammad. That Muhammad. Is the messenger of God. Is the messenger of God. It's 1 p.m. in Mission Viejo, California, when Angela Collins answers the call to prayer. It's her second prayer of the day, and following custom, she'll pray three more times before the day is done. Now I have this belief, and I love my belief, so I have to respect it and follow the rules. The rules are not easy to follow. Angela is Muslim. She has been for almost five years. Raised Catholic, she learned about Islam after meeting Muslims while traveling overseas. She converted just two months after September 11th a time when the war on terror was almost synonymous with a war on radical Islam. I saw a very dark persona of Muslims in general to Americans, and I realized it was so far removed from my actual experience abroad that people had to know this is not who they are. This is not how they are. There are an estimated 1.3 billion Muslims worldwide, and most are not Arabs. Here in the United States, while the Muslim contingent numbers an estimated 7 to 8 million, it's growing rapidly. 20,000 new converts each Inshallah, year. Inshallah, Abdullah Pedersen. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Such a great pleasure to come up here, and the first thing to do is take shahada from a new sister entering Islam, mashallah. It reminds me of the day when I had to do that myself, which is close to 25 years ago by now, by the endless grace of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Let me first reiterate a few things because not so long ago, my country became the focal point of interest on Muslim matters in the world, not because of anything good, but because we had a newspaper bringing deep and profound insult to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I don't think I have to tell you how much it hurt to be actually a citizen of that country knowing that my country all of a sudden became in the eyes of the Muslim the enemy let me make it clear to you though although I'm sure all of you know that that actually who did this was just a small group of people and we will find them wherever we go we will find people who hate Islam, we will find people who will do anything to defile Islam. What we should know, nevertheless, is that 
a lot of good came out of this incident. They have plans, and Allah has plans, and Allah is the best of planners. So now we see people coming into Islam in Denmark in numbers that we have never seen before. When I took Shahada nearly 25 years ago, we were only about 10 or 15 of original Danish Muslims. Today, there are thousands and thousands of Muslims of Danish origin, and every week... My name is Louise, and I have been a Muslim for one and a half years now. I, come I remember that we were praying for her, and that didn't help. So after that, I kind of lost my faith in, in God, because um, I was only a, a child, so I was thinking, how can God do this to me? So um, I can't believe in this. That meant that from Denmark, um, the way that I <clears throat> become Muslim, I'm not sure if I can say what directly made me become Muslim, but during my life I was raised um, like a Christian uh, from the Lutheran Church, and I was probably one of the only one in my family who was um, religious. To have a spiritual experience with God, you know, that's amazing. And the next week I saw her and I had a scarf on, and she said, what have you got that on your head for? And I said, well, remember that conversation we had, Mum? I'm a Muslim. And she went very dangerously quiet. And she looked at me and went, Muslim. Muslim. I thought you said Buddhist. <laughs> Muslim. What, those nutters? I said, yes, Mum, those nutters. And then I sent her chocolates and flowers and letters and I apologized for everything I'd ever done before because I finally understood what it was to be a daughter because I was reading the Quran. And now she thinks that Islam is a religion for nutters who love their mothers. And alhamdulillah, she's half right. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. Please give generously this evening.